Like I said, we are in want of all things here. Look around you. Who owns these shops? Who owns them? Is it us? No, but I know we're working in them. How? Because we just finished speaking to the workers. But the owners are not our people. But when you look around, who is in this community? Our people. Who is in this lower state? Our people. Read that. Book of Romans, chapter 7, verse 12. Wherefore the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just and good. So those are those good things, those just things, those rightly things. The laws, statutes, and commandments. Now jump back over to Matthew 6. Because I understand, this lower state will have us doing things that normally you wouldn't even think about doing. Normally you wouldn't even consider such a thing until you hit that lower state. Read Matthew chapter 6 verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness uh -huh. and all these things shall be added unto you. It said and all these things will be added unto you once you seek the kingdom. Now jump up for me. Let's read some of those things. What are these things? The things for life. The things for survival. Those are the things. Read. Matthew chapter 6 verse 29. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory even King Solomon, the greatest king that ever existed, the richest king, read, was not arrayed like one of these. Arrayed like one of these what? Read. Wherefore, if God so... That one of these is going into the nature that the Lord has created. The animals, the plants, the way they're decked out. Look at how the animals are, the colors, the beauty. Look at that. That's a, we imitate that, right? That's when you put on that, that chink, that chinchilla. That's when you put on that, that peacock feathers, right? That mink. We imitate because we understand the beauty that the Lord has set forth. My brother, come on up. We teaching God's chosen people. My brother, you come on up too. Come take a look at the sun. All right? We out here for y'all. Read that. Verse 26. Behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly father feedeth them. So what that's telling you is animals that don't even seek wealth and money, the Lord has them. How you doing, my brother? How you doing, my brother? What's your name? Eric. Say it one more time. Eric. Eric. Hey, Drill. Nice to meet you, Eric. All right. Take a look at this sign for me right here. What do you see yourself at? Look at the left and the right names. Judah. Ah, uh, yeah. You say it again for me. I know you said it with the country accent. That's my brother, Judah. That's right. That's the same tribe that Christ came from. Now, my brother, looking at this sign, do you know the the gravity, the weight, the importance of knowing that you're from Judah? Give me Psalms 83. Let's start at verse one. See, and I understand that you don't know, my brother. What tribe you from? Uh, Judah, I believe. Judah. So, my brother Eric. Yes. Being from the tribe of Judah, you said you can't comprehend or you don't even know like the weight, the gravity of that, right? Let me show you how important that is that you know that you Judah. Read this. You got enemies? Read this. The book of Psalms, chapter 83, verse 1. Uh -huh. Keep not thy silence, O God. So we ask the Lord, Lord, keep not thy silence. That means we want him to hear or we want him to speak out and do something, right? We ask somebody, keep not silence. Read. Hold not thy peace. Hold not, don't just let that slide. Let what slide? We about to read. Read it. And be not still, O God. Uh -huh. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult. So we about to deal with enemies, Eric. It said the Lord's enemies make a tumult. A tumult is going to an uproar, right? A revolt, right? A loud noise, a gathering of people, right? So God's enemies are rising up to do what? Read. And they that hate thee have lifted up the head. Uh -huh. They have taken crafty counsel. They have taken crafty counsel. What is crafty, Eric? Talent. Crafty? You, you said it's talent. talent. Uh, it does take some level of talent to be crafty. But what do you think about a fox? What's a fox image? Are they known for being crafty or known for being just straightforward? Crafty. crafty is that, they, thank you. Crafty. Right, so when you think of a fox, you think of a crafty creature. Why is that? Because they have played dead. 
they they sneak and slink, right? Because they're not the biggest, so they have to be craftier than others, right? So we're saying God's enemies are making a crafty or a sneaky council, a sneaky gathering. Read. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. Against thy people. And you say you're from the tribe of Judah. That's God's people. So God's enemies are making a crafty counsel, a sneaky gathering against you, Eric. To do what? Read. And consulted against thy hidden ones. Hidden. Why are you hidden? Because you did not know that you was from the tribe of Judah, Eric. My people don't know that they're God's chosen people. Right. It's hidden. Now, how did it become hidden? Read. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. They said, come, Eric, let us cut them off from being a what? A nation. What goes into nationhood, Eric? Everybody. Everything, your culture, your language, the way you teach your children. Hell, the way you get together with a woman is all cultural. Because how you approach each other, how you deal with each other, then you pass it on to your children. That's all within a, a culture, all within a nation. But they said, to do what to you, Eric? To cut you off. That's why when I ask you, you see yourself up here? You know the gravity of that? Nah, I, let me look, let me, let me see. Damn, Judah, you don't understand the work it took for them to make sure you don't know who you are. You don't understand the levels, the money, the resources. Look at this. I, I'll show you plain example right here. Right. That's one example of the works. Right? So, my brother Eric, now knowing that you are one of the 12 tribes of Israel, what's required of you? Because now you find out your enemies have cut you off from being a nation, cut you off from your culture. What must you do now? There you go. There you go. And that's what, jump back to Matthew 4 and 17. So that's what we were teaching earlier, my brother Eric. I like that. So knowing that your enemies are trying to cut you off, and if they have cut you off, what must you do? You must restore yourself. You must figure out, what have they taken from me? Let's read. Matthew chapter 4 verse 17. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Why is it at hand? Because guess what? The last days are here. God is waking us up. Guess what? Hundreds of years of slavery, we did not know who we were. But now all of a sudden we know who we are now? That's because the end is at hand. Right. So my brother Eric, you got to come into repentance. Now, what would you say repentance is, my brother Eric? Uh, I don't really know. Okay, hey, that's fine. That's what we're here for. That's why you got your brothers. So my brother Eric said he don't really know what repentance is, what that looks like. Give me um, Deuteronomy 28, right? Start at verse 1. Because I want to show you the rewards for repentance. Then I'm going to show you the downside to it. All right? And then we're going to see, do we really want to repent? And if we don't repent, what's going to happen? Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1. Do you have kids, Eric? Right? So when they doing good, get straight A's, they doing what you told them to do, you reward them, right? Then when they disobey you or talk back, what happens? Punishment. There you go. So likewise, your father in heaven, now you coming into repentance, if you do well, there's good for you. If not, there's something else. Let's read. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. If you shall listen carefully intentively so you got to listen to what's coming out my brother eric read to observe and to do to observe meaning to watch to learn to see and then to do them to have an action behind them because a lot of times we learn things and we just don't do it right read to observe and to do all his commandments which i command thee this day that all, that the lord thy god that the lord your god eric he's not the god of the whole world I know the misconception, the lie has been told that he has come to save everyone. But when you look around you, who needs saving? Is it the whole world? Who's the billionaires? Who's the millionaires? Right? Who's the wealthy? Who's the well-off generation to generational wealth? Is that you and me? That's not you and I. Right. So God's coming to save a certain people because only a certain people need saving. Right. Read. That the Lord thy God will set thee on high. God gonna set you on high, Eric. 
Why would he set you on high? Because he said, if you obey him and you keep his commandments, I'm going to reward you. Right. That's what you told me earlier, Eric. You said, if your children listen to you, they got a reward coming. That's that's my baby. I got you. Don't even, you don't even got to sweat. I got you. Because that's what a father does for his children. And our father, our God, said if we obey him, he's going to do what? He going to, there you go, by setting us on high. Read. Above all nations of the earth. Come on through, family. Come on closer. We're trying to teach you that you're meant to be above all nations on the earth. Right. Are you above all nations on the earth right now, Eric? We're not. And why is that? Jump to 15. Listen up, family. We're teaching Eric and we're teaching our family. Why are we at the bottom of society? Why do we have such low incomes, right? Why are we living under the curses of America? Why are we at the bottom of society, the dregs of society? Why is that? Read. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. Read. But it shall come to pass. But it shall come to pass is right now. We're living that it shall come to pass. Read. If thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. If you do not listen to God. If you don't listen, what's going to happen? Read. To observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses. All these what, Eric? Curses. All these curses. Is curses a good thing or a bad thing, Eric? Bad. It's a bad thing. Nobody want to be cursed. But when you look around and you see our people in this low estate, are we blessed or cursed? You know. You know, but what's fighting in your mind right now is that Christian, I'm blessed and highly favored. That's what's in your mind right now, right? Because who taught us that? This man right here. Right. We sit in his institution known as church every Sunday that one day that he would give us off to worship the sun god in slavery. And now we believe in a white Jesus. Right. Now we believe that we're blessed and highly favored. We're going to get the kingdom. Right. We don't need to have a good life now because that's what master taught. Don't worry about right now. Yeah, you poor right now, but you're going to get riches in heaven. Yeah, that yoke of harness is hard on your neck, but don't worry. You're going to be free and fly like a bird in the sky. That's what they told us back then. So now we walk around, I'm blessed and highly favored. I don't really know if I'm blessed or I'm cursed. You're cursed, Eric. Right. Look, I'm telling you, look around you very carefully and you'll realize it, right? The Lord will give you eyes solve the scriptures and show you that you are cursed as a people. Right. Now, name a curse for me. Or a bad thing, Brother Eric. Uh, that your people deal with. Like you said, low income and low income, okay. Read this for me. That all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Let's find out what's overtaking us. Read 16. Verse 16. Cursed shalt thou be in the city. Cursed shall you be in the city, so-called black man and woman. Cursed shall you be in the city, so-called Latin man and Latin woman. Cursed. Now, how are we cursed in the city? Low income? Police brutality? Our children growing up in single-parent households? If they even home. Murder. Black-on-black -black crime. Those are all curses that's in our community. Look at this shot right here. There's a list of nothing but unclean foods on this window. But if you didn't know no better, you would eat it. And guess what our people are doing? Eating it. Why? Because they don't know that God said you should only eat things with fins and scales that come out of the waters. But what's on that list of items? Nothing with fins and scales. Why is that? To keep y'all in this lower state. Because we just read, if you break God's commandments, all these what's going to come upon you? Curses. You don't think your enemies know that? I just told you they took a crafty counsel against you. Then we just read that? That they, that they took a sneaky gathering. Hmm, how can we get these people on the bottom? Because they're ruling over us right now, and I don't like that. How can we destroy these people? Oh, they got said that they shouldn't eat crab, shrimp, lobster, oysters, clam. Let's take a look at that list. Let's say live crabs, snow crab legs, raw shrimp, steamed shrimp, oysters, clams, scallops. But God said in Leviticus 11, get that for me. God said in Leviticus 11 that it must have fins and scales. You don't think he knows that? Or his people didn't know that once upon a time? Of course they do. But he owns that shop and he sets up in your community so that you can be cursed. And now that you accept that, you are cursed. How is that? The diseases we get from eating those foods. Read that. 
Leviticus chapter 11 verse 9. Uh -huh. These shall ye eat of all that are in the waters. You didn't know that was in the Bible, did you, Eric? The Lord, your whole culture, like we said earlier, is in this Bible. Your heritage, as it says, is in this Bible. Right? That's what's in this Bible. Read. Whatsoever have fins and scales in the waters, in the seas, and in the rivers, them shall ye eat. That is what you can eat, Eric. That whole list of things right there, did that have fins and scales? No. Come on now. So when you eat that, what God going to do to you? He going to punish you. But you're like, Lord, oh, I didn't know. Well, once upon a time you did know, jump to uh, Deuteronomy 28, 47. Once upon a time we did know God's commandments. Today you may not know, okay, I can't have no snow crab legs. I can't have no shrimp. Why? Because you've been eating it your whole life, right? Why is that? Same reason why you've been eating chitlins your whole life. Pig intestines. That's the same reason why. Because your masters taught you to. And guess what your masters want? You to be in slavery. They want you to stay low down, so they're going to give you foods that cause you to break God's commandments. Right. Then God is going to punish you by having them rule over you. And it becomes a vicious cycle until you have what? Look, look around you. Look at this purple and gold. This is what you have and break the mold because the Lord's spirit has come back upon us as a people because you said you're from the tribe of Judah. That's what you said, Eric. You're from the tribe of Judah. Guess what? The Lord's spirit is back. Now read that for me, Moshe. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 47. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God. Because we serve not the Lord our God. I told you, Eric, once upon a time we knew the commandments. We learned them, lived by them, even loved them, and then hated them. That's what we're about to read. Read it again. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart. With joyfulness and gladness of heart. Now you see that with your kids, for example. You tell them to do some, ah, like what? Yeah, you know. Smack their teeth, whoa. Then they all, you know, they repent. They repent quick. Because they know what's going to come if they don't repent. Punishment. But we, as a people, ah, uh, I ain't keeping that commandment. I like snow crab legs. I like some steam scallops. Some oysters. That's what we do as a people. And the Lord told me I can't have no pig feet. No ham hogs. No, Eric, you cannot have that. That's said the Bible. Read. Because thou serves not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart. You don't like to not eat pork. We don't like to not eat shrimp, crab, lobster. We don't like that thing. And guess what? From us not liking it, now we die of diseases. We're like the number one for heart disease. Right. Then you get high blood pressure, right? Diabetes. Why is that? Because we didn't serve the Lord our God with joyfulness of heart, gladness and joyfulness. Right. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family. Nation 